Hello everyone, hope you're all well and thanks very much for the support with my videos, the likes, the shares and the comments. I'm on the banks of the lovely Grand Canal in Dublin today. And I want to speak about a big issue that probably has escaped your attention over the last number of days in Ireland. It's about a new fine we've been issued by the European Court of Justice, a two and a half million euro fine in response to the audiovisual media services directive that's been pursued by the European Union that Ireland haven't put into our legislation. Now in Ireland we know 70% of our legislation is transposed from the European Union. We've seen that happen over the last number of years with a huge amounts of erosion of our democracy. And the latest one is this two and a half million euro fine that the European U Union Court of Justice has imposed on Ireland. And on top of that, it's got to be a 10,000 euro per day fine before this directive is transposed into Irish legislation. Now, isn't this very interesting? This speaks to regulating social media platforms. It comes in response to the Online Safety Act. And I've spoken about a number of occasions about the European Union Digital Services Act as well, which is a huge, again, attack on our basic right to express ourselves, to get alternative viewpoints uh, to what's really going on, and to discuss and offer an alternative to the narrative being pursued by the political establishments here in Ireland and across the European Union, I'm almost certain as well. And this comes in the context recently with the Ministry of Truth that has been formed in Ireland, the new Commission Naman, which is just further along the stretch of the Grand Canal here in Dublin. And they're looking at regulating video sharing platforms and streaming services that are established here for the whole of Europe. And this would include companies like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, X, Reddit, Pinterest, many more of these as well. And it's in interesting enough, and coincidentally, a lot of these big tech giants have their head offices, European head offices in Ireland. It's not interesting as uh, we see them pursuing this agenda and Commission Amman is going to have huge amounts of resources funded to provide their agenda to cut down on dissent and voices uh, in terms of all the draconian legislation as I've spoken about many times as well. Uh, it's also interesting as well to note in the context of all the fines that have been issued by the European Union over the last number of years, I think 23 million euro worth of fines have been issued going back to other directives such as the wastewater directive I think was about two or three million euro environmental projects was a couple of million euro and the wind farms directive which was I think 17 million which was uh, failed down to environmental impact assessments that weren't taken into regard when that was being pushed forward as well but if you look at how legislation starts in the European Union always follow the money follow the big corporations and follow the agenda neoliberal agenda of the European Union the free market, and we've seen the financialization of so much of our basic needs, we've seen our resources being stripped, and we've seen the drive towards big global capitalists making huge money at the expense of ordinary people, and ordinary people suffer with basic necessities to get by day to day. And this all emanates from European Union treaties, but as I said, a lot of these policies emanate from the European Commission at the behest of big lobbyists. Now treaties have, are interesting because they would set the conditions for the formulation of the legislations and regulation that comes forward and even the directives as well. Now how it works is that it would be brought to the European Commission then it would go to the European Council and European Parliament and they would decide then on the legislation based on that if they can't agree after a number of readings then a commission is set up to decide on what the proper wording is for the regulations, directives and decisions made as well. And then that is transposed into 
national legislation here in Ireland. And this comes in the back of a number of EU treaties over the last few years and being fast-tracked through the Nice and Lisbon Treaty. Do you remember that treaty we voted on twice because we didn't give the right answer? Here in Ireland, they held up so much in terms of the progress and drive towards neoliberalism in the European Union. And it's demonstrated the lack of democracy in this policy making with the support of the big lobbyists and the power they have in imposing legislation that favour the super rich and wealthy and big corporations at the expense of ordinary people. Now back in ah, many years ago I think there was a ruling taken by the Irish Supreme Court about getting treaties put to the people of Ireland. That was Raymond Crotty, a great advocate for democracy who uh, pushed that judgment forward as well. And here in Ireland today, we're facing a lot of very serious questions around what's going on in the context of erosion, further erosion of our sovereignty and democracy being a outpost of the European Union and uh, their agenda. We've seen that in particular, as I've said, with the erosion of our democracy and the lack of pushed by the Irish political establishments. Even Michal Martin said sovereignty was a backward-looking idea famously many years ago, and he wants nothing to do with the backward-looking idea of sovereignty, which is, shows you the erosion of democracy and the capture of power by the big corporate interests. And it's interesting in Brussels as well, have about 25,000 lobbyists. It's the kernel and it's the mecca for lobbyists in the European Union. And the banking sector would have a huge amount of lobbyists. So much money has been pushed into it to pursue these agendas that's pushed forward then to the European Commission. And 75% of lobby meetings in the European Union are with the big corporations. It's not interesting. And it's not the small guys that have uh, access to the corridors of power in Brussels. And interestingly enough, EU's uh, headquarters is right across, the European Commission offices are right across the road from NATO's headquarters. One of the same, I would say, so uh, interesting enough in terms of Brussels. And it's really been a revolving door for many of these political class in Brussels, such as Barroso, who was the ex-European Commission president, then went on to work with Goldman Sachs. We've seen the correlation here in Ireland too, where many people in the political establishment go and work with hedge funds and vulture funds. People like Enda Kenny, ex-Taoiseach, has one worked with vulture funds. Brian Hayes in Ireland, the Fine Gael. MEP and a Philadelphia minister here is working as the head of the banking sector in Ireland. Ah, surprise, surprise. They do the bidding for them when they're in power and then they go and work with them when they finish up. So the revolving door is well and truly flying here in Ireland and I'm sure in Brussels too as well. And also when you think about the dealings with Ursula von der Leyen and Alfred Burla of Pfizer, the CEO, and they're missing text messages, which is currently under investigation by the European Public Prosecution's Office. So we'll wait and see how that develops over the next period of time. So just give you a snapshot into the so-called values and democracy, which is anything but, where it's a capture by the oligarchs, it's captured by the big corporations, who pursue their neoliberal free market ideology that causes so much havoc across society in terms of pushing more people into poverty, deprivation, sky-high energy bills, sky-high rents, huge waiting lists on hospitals in Ireland, one million people in hospital waiting lists, and uh, the trolley chaos, not to mention the education chaos, public health nurses, the list goes on and on and on as they try and privatise all of our assets, all of our public and state-owned assets. Meanwhile in Ireland we have the issues arising where they're trying to fast track the migration pact, who pandemic treaty, which is a clear breach of our sovereignty, which should be brought to a referendum, under the, based on the Crowley ruling and many more issues as well that really stand up for our democracy and people having a say in the policy of the state. So thanks for joining me today, thanks for sharing my videos, thanks for liking and supporting me through various platforms such as Buy Me A Coffee. Please press like to my Facebook page, please press subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, please share my videos far and wide if you can as well. I'm very grateful for everybody who watches me from wherever you're watching and take care. I'll see you all soon. Slan from Polyoclea, Dublin. Take care.